Victor Gao joins us now to discuss President Xi's speech. Victor is the chair professor at Suchow University. Great to see you, Victor, and Happy New Year. Thank you for having me. Happy New Year. Well, first, explain the main message or messages of President Xi's speech, of course, uh, his intended audience, and as well as all the watchers around the world paying attention. Any surprises here? Thank you very much. I think President Xi Jinping gave a very heartwarming uh, New Year message to the Chinese people. I think many of us are glued to the television sets to listen and watch what the Chinese president had to say. President Xi Jinping gave a very good summary of all the major achievements that China had made in 2023 and also analyzed some of the major problems uh, existing in China's economic development. Then he also uh, gave a good, confident forecast of what China need to do in 2024 and what the future holds for China. The fact that he elaborated on some of the major achievements that China had made in 2023 really gave comfort to lots of people in China. After all, China is really breaking out to the forefront of technological achievements by focusing on research and development and plowing in billions of dollars into R&D. In this way, I think China is laying the good foundation for future uh, technological achievements as well as uh, manufacturing expansion in the future. I would say starting in 2024, the configuration of China's economy probably will need to go under a tremendous amount of transformation. China now is already the biggest exporter of automobiles, especially including uh, electric vehicles. And I think this trend will continue. And China, in terms of not only EV, but many other things, including semiconductors, for example, will be a major exporter to the world in the future. And I think the fact that President Xi Jinping also elaborated on some of the difficulties, including, for example, uh, employment and lack of uh, robust economic development in some sectors, etc., really drew attention of all the Chinese people and also those observers abroad to how China need to get our acts together to overcome these difficulties in 2024. Generally speaking, it's heartwarming because I think he said exactly the points that the Chinese people wanted to listen and it gave us a lot of confidence going forward. I want to ask you about the international watchers, as you mentioned. Um, how do you think people around the world should interpret his speech? Uh, you mentioned some of the uh, things that happened at the end of the year, especially with foreign policy. We saw a lot of movement with the president, uh, making a lot of visits around the world. What can we expect for 2024? And, and what do you think might be the biggest misconception in examining his speech outside of China? Allow me to start with the uh, misconceptions first. I think uh, uh, in the New Year message, President Xi Jinping talked about the mega China's reunification. And this is not new. I think ever since 1949, China has always been talking about reunification. Uh, in the first few decades, China talked about liberating Taiwan. And starting from the early 1980s, China has been focusing on peaceful reunification. There is nothing surprising. Uh, China does not want to use force to achieve reunification, although China will never abandon the use of force because the situation is very complicated if foreign countries get involved or if, for example, the separatists really push hard for independence or separate separation from China, then use of force may not be excluded. Now, some of the international observers put this as an indication that China is preparing for use of force to achieve reunification. I would say this is completely different. This is very much misconceived and misrepresented. Now, the other thing is that the fact that President Xi Jinping talked about some of the difficulties in the economic development is, in a sense, a matter of fact. This is very pragmatic, very realistic. But I saw some of the international observers seized upon this as if, for example, China is acknowledging that there are difficulties in its economic development. Of course, there are difficulties. 
I would say ever since 1978, China has no set roadmap. Every day we are improvising, every day we are doing innovations. And the fact that China has economic difficulties doesn't mean that we are helpless. I think it gives us more reason to get our acts together to overcome these difficulties. And especially if you compare China's situation with many other developed countries, China's doing relatively well. And I believe in 2024, we will do much better than in 2023. All right, Victor Gao, always great to get your take. Thank you so much for joining us from Beijing. Thank you. Happy New Year.